Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh, and boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah, I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We have none other than Mike Washington. Big Mike is in the building. Is this, is this, <laughs> am I seeing this correctly, Charles? Wilson, do you see what I see? Is this my imagination? The, the prodigal son has returned. The prodigal <laughs> son has returned. <laughs> yeah, I heard you on them beaches. You need that sunglasses. <laughs> this is Dr. Bill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to uh, Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, along with Wilton Jackson II. Welcome to episode 531 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports for institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. In short, we just call it HBCU sports pedagogy. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Khalil, along with my co host, Mike Washington Charles Bishop. And along guesting along Wilton Jackson II, uh, we're going to give you um, an update of what's going on in the HBC sports culture because things are about to get hot and heavy. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal out to Case Way 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. With that being said, uh, before I get the appropriate welcomes, uh, and get everybody there. I just want you to know that we're working on giving you a little bit more of the lab. Obviously, you know, in this part of the year, we do our traditional Tuesday and Thursday, as well as Sunday morning. We're looking at giving you a little more during the week. We'll see what that looks like. Stick with us. You might see a little more of Wilton Jackson in a second. I'm trying to work on his schedule. He's a busy man. He certainly negotiates a high rate. So that's a challenge. I don't know why he's trying to get paid more than you, Charles. And Mike. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. My fault. My fault. That is, that, that's not how you negotiate. No. Uh, uh, let, yeah, let me let y'all introduce yourself. Man, why, why is he? Why is he putting your business out there like that? Hey, uh, he, he trying to make me look bad. Hey, he talks you out there. I'm man. telling you, man, put your business out there. Hanging it out hey. like like wet clothing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like the governors of these NBA franchises. You know how we find something to sneak out. There? I just decided to do it myself instead of you know, leaving it to Charles to see. I like that. Charles, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Doc. I tell you what, it, it's hot out there. You need pickle juice for the reporters too. I mean, <laughs> you start showing up in some of these camps. Woo! It is mean out there. This Texas heat is no joke. Uh, you are so appropriate with that. Big Mike, how it is? It's serious to get you back in the house, man. We missed you, man. It's man. one of the first time in a while man, that we can get you on one of these media blocks. Usually able to sneak in and do your media thing and then sneak out. You couldn't even do this. It's just getting so busy. This year. Man, it's all good. Been, been on the road. And when I say on the road, I'm literally on the road out the country for a minute. So uh, good to be back in the U.S. of A. Good to be back. Uh, on the show, when uh, we got to talk about this salary thing, though, since milk bringing his up, <laughs> I'm not gonna say it too loud. But this person, uh, that's the executive director of the Miac Swag Challenge Celebration Bowl, I think his name is John Grant. He said, You need to be fired, you, you don't have time for the show no more. I said, oh, I don't know if that was. Crazy. <laughs> Oh, I think that was a private conversation. My fault. <laughs> Sorry about it, John. Wilton, 
Uh, it's just going off today. It's one of those days. How you, you doing, know, Wilt? Since, since, since you came back last week, I mean, I have to be careful. Like me and like me and Charles were saying last week, we got to duck and dodge because we don't know when the fuck you coming, what you firing out the gun. We don't know. We don't know. But nah, everything is good on my end. Trying to stay cool. You know, it's that time of the year. It's early August. It's hot outside in Mississippi. So, but that also means it's almost football. So, I mean, can't be can't be more excited than that. No doubt about it. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting data analytics. With that being said, we're going to start it off. Unfortunately, uh, we have to talk about SWAC and the MIAC more in the loss of student athletes. Uh, it's obviously a challenge, as we did last week, when we mourn you know, elders uh, that become ancestors particular legends, but it's something really, it seems overly tragic when we have a young individuals, particular college athlete, somebody that seems lifeful and vigorous that's playing the sports. And when we lose them uh, to become ancestors, it's even tougher. The Southern University athletic community is mourning the death of cross country and track and field student athlete, Tommy Thomas Jr. Thomas was uh, home for the summer, was returning for his sophomore season on a cross country and track and field team pass away earlier today. Thomas was from Lafayette, Louisiana and prepped at Northside High School. He majored in therapeutic recreation and leisure studies while at Southern. Um, obviously the director of athletics, Roman Banks, quoted as saying, our Southern University athletic family is devastated over the sudden death of Tommy Thomas Jr. Um, MEAC joins um, North Carolina Central family in mourning at fellow Eagle Terrence Howard, who passed away on Thursday, August the 1st. Howard was recruited to play at the University of Alabama. By then, head coach Nick Saban transferred to North Carolina Central following the 2023 football season after securing a full scholarship uh, to play uh, for the Eagles. Howard, who was moving to Raleigh Durham Triangle, was struck by a passing vehicle after being involved in a minor traffic accident, and that was on Interstate I-85 on Monday, July 29th. 19-year-old Houston, Texas native, uh, passed away several days later after being admitted to a Charlotte, North Carolina hospital for critical injury. So let's take a moment of silence and make sure that we honor um, both uh, HBCU uh, athletes in terms of their untimely passing. With that being said, uh, I do want to give a little bit of that. You know, I'm a soccer head. Olympics is around. Um, we have connected uh, with some of uh, Nigeria's, the women's basketball team, as they made it into um, the elimination round. Uh, fellow former player Savannah State was on their team. But a little soccer. See, on the men's side, you have a France versus Spain matchup. But we get a chance to do this for the fall. And when you talk about the predicted order of finish, uh, you have Valley at 10th. Remember, FAMU and Bethune-Cookman do not play uh, soccer, women's soccer program, or at least at this time. So you have Valley at 10, Auckland State at 9, Arkansas Pine Bluff at 8, Alabama A&M at 7. Uh, you have Prairie View A&M at 6, Texas Southern at 5th, Alabama State at 4th, Southern at 3rd, Jackson State at 2nd. And Grambling was selected to finish first to get it done on the soccer side. Obviously, uh, you had Grambling State with 164 points at the top, 10 votes. Jackson was second, but they only got four votes. And you had Southern that received some votes as well, which were equal to Jackson with four. Uh, separated a lot in terms of point differential, 161-31, um, as you talk about what's going on there. We'll get into some preseason awards. Uh, but I wanted to acknowledge soccer because, you know, that's one of my big-time pastime sports. I don't get to talk about it. Charles does a little golf. Mike sneaks up with the baseball, and he's even crossed over in lacrosse. Uh, Wilton, what, what Olympic-type sport are you into? I, I hadn't even got a chance to test you on that yet. Really, probably track and field. Track and field would probably be my thing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I like to be a track and field fan. So oh, yeah. little – that photo finished the other day, and everybody. Exactly. exactly. And Charles yeah. shaking his hands. He trying to act like he got 
got better eyes than the camera. I'm like, that ain't what he saw. He's like, all right, all right. I gave him a little speech. He's like, hey, he got it by a chest hair. Yeah, by a chest hair, exactly. Literally. By a chest hair. <laughs> It certainly was uh, by a chest there. We'll get the chance maybe to acknowledge some of these uh, players a little later on into that uh, as we get into the season in terms of preseason, but we're up against the clock. So I want to turn the page, get into it. I want to make sure these folks get a full chance to really break down when I get into these poll rankings. So we're going to go to our first break, come back on the other side. We'll bring in another star, one of the biggest uh, switch hitters out there in terms of getting up their pitch hitters. We're going to bring him in the fold in our second segment. We're going to break down the next seven, Charles. We're going to get into 14 through eight. This is the mm. second subgroup. Um, and so this is where we get interesting. Many people are going to be intrigued about this because many folks knew who were going to be those first 21. There might have been one or two that you questioned. Wilton kind of threw me up there, and I couldn't understand why you Jackson fans while all up in the edge about Southern program, but that I won't say too much about that, Mike. I, I, you know, ID folks did. I'm like, who got left out? They like they tongue. Yeah. They were ready. Southern, Southern did. Yeah. I said, oh, man, Southern first year coach program. I mean, they be lucky if they can switch. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna get into the next group. But this is the group that fall out of that first seven. So I'm mm. fascinating to see in terms of this sandwich group. These are some folks that either can fall hard and fall into the bottom third, if you would, or can have a uptick and find a way in that top or that first third, I should say. With that, we'll be right back on the other side. Major division. We're going with 15, 14 through 8, I should say. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Hey, grab me one, too. Brian Fulford, A.D. Drew, and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero at a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer! Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Book direct at choicehotels.com, where travels come true. Gotta get the corners. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. 
Wilton Jackson the second and A.D. Drew. Yeah, we have a battery of individuals that I wanted to see as we got into this second uh, quadrant, if you would, uh, of the rankings in terms of 14 through 8. We're going to take the first four and get through it like this mm. in terms of what that looks like. Charles, you you you, you throw the scratches or something? You look, you you, you kind of got some questions. I'll just this, 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 at this number is fourteen. Yeah. Yes, this is Bethune Cookman Wildcats, three and eight, two and six in twenty twenty three. They led by Raymond Woody, the junior head coach. He's in his second year, obviously coming back to his alma mater, um, and he's done a lot of recruiting in terms of hitting the recruiting trail. Uh, this past season. So some people are excited, uh, but not so much in terms of those eight uh, hit. It looks like we got Doc frozen. Hello, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Charles, you want to take, Charles, yeah, you want to take over? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll take a look at this next group here, uh, especially uh, taking a look at uh, I think Doc started off here with Bethune Cookman, and we'll just run it around the course here. Uh, we'll start off with you, AD. Uh, Doc has Bethune Cookman sitting here at that number 14 spot. What do you see from the Wildcats this upcoming season? I see a scary a team. Yeah, oh, a lot I of people got a back. We have a fifth in terms Doc, of we, where they Doc, are. We lost you. Doc, we lost you as Doc, we were talking about Bethune Cookman. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, close me, up, uh, Bethune get that Cookman, in there. So. Bethune Cookman. Yep. Three and eight, two and six. Appreciate that. 105 points sitting at number 14. That second group to start things off. That is Raymond Woody Jr. Uh, a lot of people said he hit the trail when doing a lot of recruiting this year. He's picked fifth in the East uh, in terms of what everybody said over the last couple of years is the toughest division. We'll see what that looks like uh, as we get forward. Moving forward at number 13. We have Norfolk State Spartans. As you know, they're coached by Dawson Odoms as he is getting into his fourth year in terms of what he's getting done there. He was 3-8, and 1-4 and four last season, under 16 points. A lot of folks think he should be taking his next movie as a big game in the MEAC SWAC, starting things off early against FAMU, the reigning champions, so he can make a major statement. Uh, number one pick in terms of what that looks like with 50 points. Uh, it'll be interesting. He did get one first place vote in this predicted order of finish in terms of what's going on there. So I'm uh, fascinated to see what should take place there. Then we have Gremlin State Tigers. A lot of folks get excited about the Gremlin Tigers. They got a new coach, Mickey Joseph, in his first year. Uh, they were five and six and four and four last year, which led to dismissal of the coach. It'll be interesting to see what Gremlin State is going to do in terms of where they are predicted to finish this year by those SIDs and head coaches. Uh, they're coming out of the West. They have them picked third. A lot of people feel something about this Grandma State Tigers. 72 points, four first-place votes. Oh, some people thought really big about them being able to take a huge step. Quarterback coming back, but I'm hearing down there that uh, uh, they might have a different quarterback taking over the reins, but it is what it is. Getting to number 11. At number 11, you have Eddie George. Eddie George, taking can he take that next step coming in in 2021? So he's entering into his fourth season. Had a winning record last year, 6-5, 2-4, 23 uh, in 2023. 123 points uh, as we look in climbing up. With that, we'll take these first four and get into it and see what it looks like. Let me... Start with you, Charles, since you uh, riled up your face a little bit there. I'm going to go with you and see what you have to say uh, in terms of this next group. What do you think me, about 14 through 11 at this point? Let me start with the caveat right here. And, and this is probably a caveat that goes from 14 on in. But this this group here with consistent quarterback play can 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 vault themselves into, into the next group. Um, mm. When you take a look at Bethune Cookman, uh, and I think everybody's talking about Bethune Cookman. Are you saying regards. that because you think they're going to be pretty solid on defense? Well, or I, you I, think I mean, that if they get that quarterback, they'll be that good on offense? I think they have some pieces on offense, especially when you start taking a look at 
Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, transfers, FBS transfers that they brought in, I think Bethune Cookman brought in 12 to 13 FBS transfers. Uh, so I, there was a big thing on upgrading the talent there. And they were, that was a confident group walking around Swag Media Day. Uh, I'm, I can envision, you know, where they would double their win output from last year. But what I think is very interesting, uh, they get Alabama State at home. Uh, they get Jackson State at home, and they get Grambling at home. So those – those are some interesting games that I'm going to keep an eye out with with regards to Bethune Cookman. Uh, taking a look at uh, Norfolk State, they bring back the most starters uh, in the MEAC. When you take a look at Otto Coons and what jumped out at me, uh, MEAC Media Day, they got 13 guys, either first or second team, all MEAC. So that, that, that's something that really jumps out. Uh, they're bringing back a lot of experience, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Tennessee State. Uh, Draylon Ellis, he's in his third year in this program uh, here at Tennessee State. That's going to be huge with regards to consistency. They got a new offensive coordinator coming in. Uh, what concerns me about Tennessee State, we've come to know them over the past few seasons as being a defensive ball club. They're replacing nine starters on the defensive side on the ball, but they're, 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 they really look good from a skill position standpoint on, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, three returning starters uh, uh, with regards to the wide receiving core. Uh, two running backs. Uh, one that's an all-conference running back coming back. So, and Draylon Ellis. Uh, I think that's the big key for Tennessee State coming into the season. And then... Whew. The Braves. Ah, Tyler May. Uh, this we is ain't got be... that far yet. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh we, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I cut it off. Where, where, where are we at? Gremlin? Gremlin. No, we, Gremlin, you, 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 you good when you went to 11 Tennessee State. You know, Charles get excited. He he, he going to get into the next 10. He, you're right. You're right. I, 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 that's, I, I, that's all right. I, I'm, I'm going to give him a break this week. He's so I, fired I, up. I See, right what Wilson, what he did learn last week. I like what Charles learned. He snuck in and talked a little bit about that schedule about a couple of teams, right? He did. He did. Yeah, he went back and see. That's my favorite pet peeve. A lot of folks, when they get into their analysis, most people do a really good job of looking what the team is made of. You know, quarterback coming back, defense, offense. A lot of folks figure into that. You know, what does the coach looking back, his experience, what he's been able to do. But a lot of folks forget about the schedule. But I like that, Charles. You learned a really good lesson there. Good job. Good job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With that being said, let me go to you, Mike, uh, with your little finger on your face there. You know, uh, <laughs> go ahead and tell me what do you think about 14 so, to 11? Well, Bethune, I, I don't see them climbing out the basement. They Let's look at the last two years. They, <laughs> they scored 18 points a game. Allowed their opponents twenty six. That's that's double. Uh, that's a data point. Ding, ding. The other data point is what's going to be the who's going to be the quarterback. I don't care how many transfers, new people they got. So yeah, they're they're right, and I you could argue that they could be down a little further. Norfolk State they were four place two thousand twenty three. 2022, they, <laughs> so they were one of four. I mean, there's consistency lying there, all right? They were last in defense. Gramlin State, we always start the year saying, well, what's Gramlin going to do? Are they here? Can Gramlin get – everybody wants to drink the Gramlin Kool-Aid, but really Gramlin has dropped some huge games. Can they with a, with a sudden what newer coach, can they win the big games? I don't know. I don't think so. So, yeah, I think this is appropriate. And Tennessee State, we talk about Tennessee State. We got excited about Tennessee State. Remember, they started out in 2023 really good. What happens? Where did they end up? Think about it. Let's wait. Where did, where did they end up in the OVC? Eighth, ninth? Can they even climb out of the OVC in at least the top four or five by the end of the season? Um, I don't know. This is what Eddie's what third year, fourth year. I, you know, he's had a full recruiting cycle, so I don't, I don't see them actually climbing out of the bottom five. Did Mike just come in here off the beach and start beating the Fiesta? And did he just say that all four of these teams should be in the bottom seven? Did I hear that correctly, Wilton? 
Am I losing it? What are your thoughts in terms of these four? Because I think Mike is just like, no, none of these folks should be here. I'd hate to ask him which four teams in the bottom seven going to uh, replace them with, but I'm not even sure we have time for that. But we're going to see if we can get in that as well. But, Wilton, before we do that, what are your thoughts on 14 through 11? So – I gotta. I, I'm gonna somewhat slightly disagree with with Mike on on the Bethune Cookman. I will say this: I don't think they they doubled their Thank wins. Somebody, meaning like I don't think I don't I don't I would not say today on August six that Bethune Cookman will get six wins. I do think they could potentially get five, and I think that Charles pointed out something really key. Well, he got and over and under five and a half. I'm gonna make you pick. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick at five. I'm going under. <laughs> I'm not. I am not giving them more than five wins today. I am not. But I will. I will give them five today. But looking at four this, and game, I'm giving them four and a half. Then <laughs> I'm giving four and a half. I'm giving four and a half. Yeah. So I'm gonna say this. I, I, their schedule is is it's it's interesting. They got they uh especially a couple games. They have Alabama A and M. At Alabama AM, at Mississippi Valley, but really those critical games of like Jackson State, Grambling, uh, those are definitely two games I'm gonna watch on their schedule for for uh Bethune Cookman. And now, they, gave, they gave you know, Jackson State hell last year. They did. And that's yeah. one reason that's that's something I didn't forget. And so that's why I said like I would, truly at home, not in Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily sleep on Bethune Cookman like that. Now Norfolk State, I am gonna go off what Mike said. I mean, I, I know they got a lot of returners coming back. I know that you know they, they have all the the, the, the critical players and, and, and returners, but I'm not buying it. Not today. I I, I got them pretty mm-hmm. much where they are. If I it, honestly I probably would have put them behind Bethune Cookman. That's just how I feel about it. Now ding, 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 ding. It's, the point. it's to make a break yeah, you don't believe in Dawson Old. That's a yeah. make or break you up hey. a data point. Ding, ding, ding. Very he much just broke it. Yeah. Ding. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is. It is. <laughs> so, then, Ooh, uh, so you good with Grambling and Tennessee State? Yeah, I am. I, I think that where they where they are right now, um, I won't be drinking the Grambling. I love a brand, boy. There's something about a brand name to Wilton and Charles. Just hear me, hear me out. But with, 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 <laughs> with Grambling, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking the Grambling Kool Aid right now. I have in the past, but I'm not Thank drinking you. it right now. But I do think that Mickey Joseph uh, is gonna bring bring something to that program that that we necessarily haven't seen in in a couple of years. So again, I'm not saying they're gonna win this I way. Do. Wish. I, I do have. I feel good about Mickey. I think he he's gonna push them forward. I agree with that. I do. I, I subscribe to But he better do it pretty fast because you know how them grambling heads are. If you're not I a grambling subscribe. person, you can't yeah. do it fast enough. I They'll start turning on you grambling. real fast. You think it's, it's stand ugly stand in Southern or Jackson. Damn you to grambling eat they own for real, particularly if you're not they own. <laughs> Let me go to A.D. Drew. Good talk, man. Great discussion. A.D. Drew, where are you with these first four in this second group? I'm going to try to make mine quick but brief. You know, for the first time in about five years, there's no dysfunction going on at the beach. You know, Bethune Cookman, uh, mm-hmm. solid first solid recruiting class by their by uh, by their head coach. You know, last last year dysfunction, year before that dysfunction, year before that dysfunction, year before that COVID. So first year Bethune is on solid ground coming into a season. I expect some improvement from Bethune. I don't know if they're gonna get to the top ten. But I'm like, well, they will get more than three wins. They will get more than four wins. Let's take these next two quickly. Both these teams have their conference first team quarterbacks on them, and they're outside the top ten. Where have you ever seen that at? Mm. Yep. And here's the here's the crazy thing: we don't know if these two first team quarterbacks are actually going to be the ones under center on game one. Yo, bingo. So Bingo. I, I'm dis I'm discounting those two. Mm. Eddie George, this you you great uh, analysis. You and Dawson, you and Dawson are talking about actually listening to these coaches that are telling you that they hadn't selected their first quarterback. I got so many people talking about man quarterback this and that. I was like, man, how much money you want to put on whether these coaches going uh, quarterbacks going to be starting after game two? You yeah. got quiet. Yeah. Get quiet. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. and uh, Eddie George. You and Dawson Odoms are roommates in the Do or Die Suite. So you know, I think these are two or nine years for both for both of those coaches. So not only does Dawson Odom not know who his quarterback is, but he's but he said that the do or die is. So go ahead. You think well, you think Eddie? You think Eddie if we take break and come back after this, we might have two I mean, more coaches it, in the do or die. Go I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this quickly. Who's gonna start screaming faster? Grambling fans or Southern fans if they coach have a bad year? And Eddie George, yeah, you may be good at bringing in their money, but sooner or later, people go want you going want some more W's. Yeah, six and five is not going to cut it, especially in that in the OVC. And yes, their schedule uh, prevents them from ever getting more than seven wins. Who's the first fan base on the ledge? Alabama and M. Oh, well, uh, they they in the class by themselves. Put them in yeah. the one. That's why I see they, they might. Let, I might have two let them lose Magic City. City. Let them lose Magic City. Uh, again. Magic City would be a tough one to lose. Mm-hmm. Can yeah. he make it to Magic City? I'm talking about game six, five, six. In terms of how you're looking, in terms of those fans getting on the ledge, because it's not over. A game six, you just right there. You can have a close of the season that will flip everything around. But yeah. in terms of your point. I'm interested in that Grambling and Southern in terms after the first six games, who will be screaming the louder? Uh, well, both of them be feeling pretty good. It'll be interesting mm. to see what that looks like. Mm. With that being said, let's take our next break and get into the final three of this second group and see what you think about this. I will say this. Charles kind of put a little bit of it out there, but it's going to continue to be a lot of swag schools in this next three. So we'll see what that looks like. Stick with us after we take this next break. We'll be right back on the other side. Atlanta, Georgia. The HBCU football capital hosts the Cricket Miak Swag Challenge on August 24th. Florida A&M Rattlers, Norfolk State Spartans, Swag versus Miak. The rivalry is real. Come out to Center Park Stadium to see the returning HBCU national champions and two of the best HBCU bands in the land, the Marching 100 and the Spartan Legion. The day starts with a kickoff fan experience tailgate and concludes with a primetime matchup on ABC. For more information, visit MiakSwagChallenge.com. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thin's. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. You can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who's about, who's about. So listen to Professor, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. And pay attention, because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville inside the HBC Sports Lab looking at some of these comments between the two uh, as we on YouTube by JBN uh, as well as our other social media platforms and I also checking on Facebook. Man, SIC talk uh, by HB2 HBC football says Savannah State is going to clip Southern. 
Woo wee! Yeah, he said they will be on the ledge real quick if that happened. But yeah, Wilton even scratching his. <laughs> or Kendrick, that'd be ugly. Ooh, that'd, that'd be ugly. Here's the question, Doctor Kavir: Which SIA team is more likely to get? Oh. I was going to say which SIA team is more likely to get the w? Savannah State or Tuskegee? Tuskegee Grambling or Savannah State Southern? Oh, that's a good question. That's the two in terms of whoever. I know if both of them don't win, you're right. It'll be some folks going to the ledge. Do they play? Grambling is the second weekend and yes. Savannah is the first weekend? <clears throat> yes, second weekend. Mm -hmm. yes. I'll have to keep my eyes on those two. Great point, A.D. Drew. Shout out to Edwin D. Moore. He said, y'all not agreeing with me. I said, well, that's, you know, I don't know what's up. They taking the, the, the wrong Kool-Aid drink, I guess it is. But let's look at these <laughs> next three. Ten through eight. Finish out this second seven group. It's going to be fascinating. Charles let it out the box a little bit, but he's right on it. It's number 10. All Corn State with Cedric Thomas as he's getting it done. They were picked. Out of the West, number one, Cedric Thomas kind of had that look on his face. like, I don't want that smoke right now. Not yet. 11 first place votes, 112 points coming out of the West. Been a different representative of the West the last couple of years, especially since expansion. So it'll be interesting to see will that continue to be the case in terms of what that looks like. With that being said, uh, the Braves were 7-4 and four last year, 6-2. and two. 127 points. They tied at the top of the West with Prairie View, but Prairie View went on the road and had a 50-yard field goal at the end of the game that ultimately was the difference in terms of the tiebreaker with both teams finishing at 6-2 and two coming out of division. So it's fascinating to see what that looks like. A couple of other big tough losses, including one that we watched and witnessed right here in Houston at Texas Southern University against Alcorn State. That really put it in play for that final big victory by Prairie View over Alabama State, which many people didn't think they could get. So fascinating to see what that looks like. But we're turning the page and moving to 2024. With that being said, I have Alabama AM, and folks want to put this man's chair on the fire. I think he's going to be all right. At number nine, I have him in the middle, Connell Maynard. I think he's too talented to stay down for that. And I think we lost Doc Understand again. that. 139 <laughs> points, as I know, is flooding a little bit, but we're jumping back in there. So that's Alabama A&M, the Bulldogs with Connell Maynard, as he is the oldest coach in the SWAC in terms of his tenure. 139 points. Uh, will he even get to Magic City before he starts showing <clears throat> that this team is going to make a statement and make it interesting for the Magic City? Charles doesn't look like he's convinced. I think he's going to be all right. Then we have at number eight, Prairie A&M University right there, just outside of the top seven. I know this will make a lot of people mad, but Prairie A&M, Coach Bubba, people just refuse to believe in Coach Bubba. Uh, but Bubba says, just watch. Uh, mm -hmm. Bubba McDowell coming into third season here. Uh, with men in the hunt the last two years. He finished at six and six overall. Six and two, 2023, 144 points. One of the things that I think is fascinating with them being picked second with 104 points in the SWAC West, finishing eight. Um, nice thing about Prairie View, if you're looking at those schedules, they have the juggernauts in the West, the, one of the top teams in the East with FAMU, but those games at home. They have mm -hmm. Texas Southern, their rival, at home. They have Southern on campus at home. At home. They have FAMU yep. at home. At home. They have all corn state. At Graves, a lot of said they're at home. They do have that Dallas State Classic neutral site uh, in Gramlin. So if this is a year that Prairie View continues to bring the talent, if they can find a way to get it done at home, it'd be interesting uh, to see what that looks like uh, in terms of those statements there. That finishes out the top seven. Number 14, Bethune Cookman Wildcats at number 13, Norfolk State Spartans at number 12, Ramblin State Tigers at number 11, Tennessee State Tigers uh, coming out of the top ranked independent program of HBCUs at the major division level at number 10, 
All Corn State Braves at number nine, Alabama A&M Bulldogs at number eight, Prairie View A&M Panthers. So by deductive reason, you know the top seven. You'll see where they are picked next week, but we'll give you the official selection of where the top seven is, but you can deduct and find out who the top seven is. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I'm going to go to Will. I want to know what you think of these next three uh, in this second segment of our seven teams in iteration of preseason ranking in 2024. So looking at these three, um, Maybe I'm a little biased. I'm not fully confident in Connor Maynard at AM. I know he's the most tenured coach. Uh, I'm just not fully satisfied in, in knowing that they get the job done. However, their you, schedule you're is. Not, you, you're, you're not the only one. I don't think anybody believes in Maynard right now, except for Dr. Camille. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because, but, but I will say this, though, their schedule isn't terrible. I mean, of course, they got Alabama. I mean, they have Auburn first, but I mean, that's, that's a lot. But. They got Kentucky State, Georgetown College, Kentucky, and then they have Austin PA, and then they have FAMU, um, Austin PA and FAMU on the road. But then they have Jackson State, Bethune, Cookman, Alabama State, and Southern at home. So if those are – if that's any indication of what they might need to to do to make their season, they have have the home field advantage there. In the Jackson State game in Mobile? Well, yeah, yeah, that's okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But All but right. the other games and will Alabama be Alabama State is in Birmingham, Magic City. But to your point, they got a fan yeah. probably one of the tougher games. They certainly have that at home. And right. even in Mobile, uh, while Jackson State will have their contingents and they'll be uh, bringing it there. If they're getting off the season, they'll bring it significant. But Bulldogs will be uh, at home and they're familiar playing there. So it'll be fascinating to see what that looks like. That's a, I like that point. What are your yeah. thoughts in terms of uh, uh, the Braves and the Panthers? So with Alcorn and, and Coach Thomas, you know, he's coming into this 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 program, not a stranger to the SWAC. Um, I, I don't know. I, when they when they were picked first to win the SWAC West, I was a little shocked, a little surprised. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, Preb, you probably had something to say about this, uh, which they should. Um, again, looking at this. I schedule, love it. I love it. I thought they, it was they perfect. Have a, they have a brutal schedule. They start off with UAB and Vanderbilt. Then they have Edward Waters. I mean, and, and in previous years they've had some 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 run-ins, some interesting run-ins with McNeese and then Mississippi right. Valley, of course. But then they get UAB. But then they got Grambling and Southern on the road. So I think right there, Grambling Southern, Alabama State, Texas Southern, at Prairie View, Jackson State. That latter part of their schedule <laughs> is going. We're going to find out a lot about Alcorn. Yeah, real quick. Yeah. And with, 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 with Prairie View, you kind of hit the nail on the coffin in terms of saying, like, what their schedule looks like. You know, they start off with, with Texas Southern. But like you said, they also have Southern and Grambling, um, you know, home there. So, like, I'm, 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 I'm okay with the, the, the last two um, and, and where they are. A.D. Drew, where do you come into the mix? Alabama A&M has a bye after week four. If Alabama A and M is at five hundred or below, going into that bye, the Rottweilers will start chasing the Bulldog. <laughs> Alcorn, what Alcorn does have a, have a tough schedule, but their peers think that they're the number one team in the West. True, but we in the media have them at ten. Did I th- did I put them number one in the West? No. Did I think they're let's see? That means you've got two other. Let's see, you got we see Prairie View. That means there are two other SWAC West teams ahead of them. If I'm doing my deductive reasoning, Doctor Cavill, based yep. on our good polling. point, good point. I'm just sometimes the math the math ain't math on that one. And speaking of the rest of the rest of the poll. Of the top ten, we we know who we know who the seven who are left are. We see number eight, nine, and ten. Honestly, I think any of those nine outside of Alabama A and M, with the right things happening, uh, good quarterback play, a lot, of, a lot of these teams already have solid defense. They don't get hit by the injury bug. Any of these, any of those other nine, could wind up winning the Celebration Bowl. Honestly speaking, wow, mm-hmm. that's a statement. Nice, mm-hmm. nice one. Good job, Drew. 
Way to step out there. Big Mike, where are you in terms of these next three in this second seven group of major division programs? I'm okay. I, I'm, I'm okay. I think Alcorn State should be ahead of Alabama A&M. Don't have uh, – for the comments, I'm not a Connell Maynard fan. I don't care how many games they have home. I don't care what the buy is. I don't care what the schedule is. <laughs> what, what is Alabama? What, I don't care. What are the Bulldogs going to do? What have they shown in the last two, you know, couple of years? Uh, the question is, who's in the first seven? I see some other West teams. Is Morgan State in the top? Th- I haven't seen. Maybe I wasn't here last week, but I want to know who's in the top seven. Yeah, what the Morgan State would. Oh, I love Mike. Mike giving a great team, <laughs> baby. Let it go, Mike. So, come back off the field. If, if those other two West teams and Morgan State are in there, something is wrong with this program. <laughs> who was predicted? Who was predicted in, in the year our Lord now? You just went to sleep. <laughs> coming to the West, it was Alcorn State, right? Where mm-hmm. did they finish? Who was picked to predict, predicted in twenty twenty two? It was Southern then Alcorn State. Who ended up at the top? Prairie View A and M. So. Us as these these investigators need to take a look at how we're picking these teams, but you got to develop some 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 confidence in Bubba because he's shown you that he he can put a formidable team on there. But I want to see who's in that first seven. Okay, because mm-hmm. if it's two other, well, West I can teams, tell you this, Mike. It's not a West team in the top seven. Southern mm-hmm. was in the Good. bottom seven, and Pine Bluff right. was in the so bottom. So who would have me? Oh. Hey, you have to wait till next week. I'm just telling you, it's not a team in the I, West. I, I, don't blow, blow, I don't want to blow the discussion up, but um, I, I would switch Alabama A&M and Alcorn. I think Alcorn, their schedule, uh, I, I, I would give them a slight edge with just based on schedule, who they play at home, when they play them during the season, you know, mid-season, early season. That tends to be a lot more favorable. But that's all numbers and statistics. So, mm. I, I'm okay with the top three. Just switch those two. Charles, save your boy with all these data points, man. He he mad because ain't nobody in the West <laughs> in the top ten. <laughs> it's always the West bias, huh? <laughs> you, you know, I I, I, I think it's it, it's very interesting, Doc, especially looking at all corn. I think like you, Wilson, that was for me the head scratcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, with them being picked to finish first. And when you take a look at Alcorn, and I, I kind of had to go back and take a look at it because the tailwind was behind Alcorn coming into the season. They won six out of the last seven, but they had that huge face plant against Texas Up. Uh, that that sticks out to me. Uh, and when you take a look some more at the data points, as, as Mike likes to put out, uh, since 2021, uh, Alcorn 9-10 and 10 on the road. I think that's huge when you take a look at they are below 500 on the road and you take a look at the teams that they have to take on uh, on the road this season, Grambling, Prairie View and Southern. It it makes it difficult for me to uh, have a little bit more faith in in breaking in a new quarterback, essentially, and a new head coach. So that one's going to be tough, I think, for Alcorn to uh, rise up to number one, as they have been predicted. Uh, Let's be honest about Alabama and M. They have been. They have not been the same program since Scootergate. Uh, when you stop and that just the air went out. Did the he talk about Scootergate? Yeah, you the air went out. Blamed it all on Scootergate. Yeah, I mean, man, I'm, I'm, I thought he would have came with a quill glass. At least he went to the scooter. Yeah. Woo. Y'all gonna put y'all gonna get enough of putting Alabama A and M up there. They ain't had a hit since Deion Warwick uh, back in solid gold. So, oh God. They, it's, it's, it's been a tough go. I mean, see, Doc had to put Alabama A and M to keep the house to keep the house in peace. That's what that that's what that really is, y'all. <laughs> Alabama A and M in that top ten. And then, hey, if, hey if, Charles, you mentioned. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say you mentioned that uh, Alcorn State road record. You got to put that asterisk with that because you remember two of those years. They had more ro- road swag games and home swag games because that they had true. to play all those games back in right. the COVID yeah. season. You're right. Because one right. year they only had two home swag uh, contests. So that is a good point. Great point. Yeah, that let's put point. that asterisk with that. Great yeah, point. that is a great point. Uh, I will say this about Prairie View. They have been knocking. They, they have been, oh, go ahead, Charles. Finish up. Prairie View has been knocking on the door 
uh, the past two years uh, in terms of being in the SWAC championship, they've got to knock the door down this year, especially with the teams coming to Prairie View this year. I don't know. Yes. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm breaking in uh, a new quarterback, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Mike? Yes, that's correct. I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's got to get done this year. And and coming to the Hill has to be a house of horrors for teams coming to play Prairie View this year. You've got to claim home field advantage. Everything is set, ready for you to handle. You've got to take care of your business. You've got to figure out a way to get yourself back into the SWAC championship game. And went. Yep. Agree. Good point. You know, I don't know if there's something about Prairie View Stadium that reminds me of like Dallas uh, Cowboys. Uh, that is so large and such a comfortable stadium that other teams do not come in there with that awestruckness and, and feel very comfortable. Yeah. Prairie View has not really had the sex and success of their home field That's advantage right. since oh, they man. built the yep. new stadium. Yeah, um, yep. it's it's really nice, obviously, but maybe it's a little too nice for the home team. Maybe they need to go do what they do. Or what is it, Iowa State? I think where they, uh, I mean Iowa, where they paint the locker room pink. Maybe they some, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you got to make it not, not as friendly, not as not as comfy. Out. Something you know, don't feed them. Let's, I don't what they do. <laughs> Let's take this last break and come back on the other side. We'll give you some insight in terms of going into. Some of these practices stick with us as we get right back into it after this break. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket Sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one too. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Live from Atlanta, Georgia, the HBCU football capital hosts the Cricket Meat Swag Challenge on August 24th. Defending HBCU national champion Florida A&M Rattlers versus the Norfolk State Spartans. For more information, visit MeatSwagChallenge.com. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team if they want a lot. Yeah, and who the ball? Who the ball? So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab as we get in this next segment. I want to play a little video to get you into a little bit more of that football groove, if you would. A.D. Drew, let it rip. As he's doing that, Charles, give us a little insight of what's going to be played. Yeah, I had an opportunity to kind of catch a little bit of Texas Southern's practice. Got an opportunity to talk to Chris Dishman. So, uh, you know, early days of uh, practice was out there today. Things got a little chippy first day and pass with Texas Southern. We got an opportunity to kind of take a look, little bit of, of a look at the Texas Southern Tigers. 
Good stuff. Go ahead. Drew? Wait a minute. Uh, there we go. So the volume's not coming through, but I was asking Coach Dishman a little bit about the early days of, of camp and, and what he's seen thus far from the team. And then I asked him a little bit about uh, position battles and in, in, in terms of what he was looking for with various positions. And he's very point blank, you know, that basically uh, no position is safe. Uh, he's looking at camp battles as a whole uh, uh, because uh, everybody's going to be uh, – having to uh, work for their position. He doesn't care if they started last year or started the previous year. So looking at it the, from the totality of that standpoint, uh, it's very positive in terms of looking at this Texas Southern team uh, early uh, uh, early in camp. But like I said, I was out there a little bit today, caught a little bit of practice, uh, first day in pass for Texas Southern. And the thing that he wanted was stressing was how do they look in day two, three, four in in pads, you know, when they get into the mundane, into the processes of, of, of camp. And then it leads us into the first scrimmage this upcoming Saturday for Texas Southern. So those are some of the things that I kind of talked to him about in an interview. And I apologize about the, you uh, audio not coming and through and giving you guys are seeing. No, no problem. We understand uh, that's what happens with yeah. the technical process. But the important thing is we got the insight and in what we wanted to do and give folks a little bit of video of what's going on there. But I wanted to ask a follow-up question to you, Charles, and then we'll go uh, to Wilton and you as well, AD. What do you look for this time in this early practice from your experience as you go and cover these sports and you ask questions of your coaches? What kind of things do you look for in the questions that you're asking them based on your experience over the years, Charles? Just kind of looking overall at the team, some of the, the, the disciplinary things that are kind of jump out, especially uh, when they get in the team uh, team portions of the practice, uh, when you start kind of taking a look, are, are they kind of mentally in tune? Are they focused? And that's some of the things early in camp that everybody focuses on. And then you start paying attention to the position battles. You pay attention to, uh, for me, the offensive line, the defensive line. You know, uh, are those guys, you know, is there give and take, if you will, uh, with regards to camp? So I, I think today, just kind of take a look a look around. The defense was uh, really flying around the ball. And I think more than anything with regards to Texas Southern, and this is kind of the sense that I get from the players, they're really excited with Chris Dishman uh, being in place and they're really flying around. But, you know, as with, you know, trying to set a mark on a team, you know, he, he – had them do uh, down ups, if you will, today. Disciplinary issues. They just got a little bit of a uh, little chippy in practice today. They had to pause practice for a little while and go through that. So it's those little building blocks uh, that you kind of see teams uh, as they're sort of forming an identity, forming a culture that kind of catches my eye. Wilton, you've been in this business for a while in terms of what that looks like uh, with various practices. Uh, at various levels uh, in terms of your case, whether it's high school, uh, college, or even pro, uh, when you go in there as a media head, uh, do you go in there with, with the assignment with particular things that you can look for that you want to get your readers or listeners in terms of what you're going to talk about? And from your perspective, what do you look at? I mean, you absolutely do. And for me, I think more than anything, the first thing I look at is, you know, are the players in shape? You know, sometimes you come into, you know, these the summer trainings. Yes, you've been working out and you've been working out with weights and things like that, uh, you know, in the months ahead. But like once you get outside in, in the heat in, in, in August and a lot of these schools, obviously in the south, that makes that plays a big role in what your conditioning looks like. So, you know, looking at that, also something that, that Charles pointed out, the chemistry. You know, granted, you're you're having these practices during this time to build that chemistry, whether it's the quarterback room, whether it's the running backs, our, our, our players – bonding with each other because sometimes you know I've, I've seen teams where obviously the teammates are teammates but at the same time you can literally see that there's no continuity there like it's like yeah we're playing we, we're, we're, we're on the field together but you, you just don't see that bond all the time and the, the good teams in most cases the ones that are always constantly winning and continuously being successful they have that bond and granted you know a lot of those bonds aren't always made on the field a mm. lot made off the field before the locker room yeah 
you know, and so you, you think about those things. And then obviously just the, the, the fundamentals. So, so many times, you know, how many times have you, have you all seen where uh, athletes get so to the fact that I can't wait to get on the field or this particular sport to do this, this and that. Focus on the fundamentals because believe it or not, a lot of times in games, what, what do games come down to? The fundamentals. And you got to break down of them. Exactly. You got to get them right now so that when you get in these moments where, it's, you know, I'm just throwing out something, 28-28, you have a, a, a field goal to, to win a game, but you don't know the exact, you know, slide to do for special teams. And if you're not doing it correctly, you might be looking at a block kick that could have got you a game that could have, you know, could have helped you win the game in the fourth quarter as opposed to going to overtime. Or the legal, procedure, the legal procedure penalty at the worst uh, worst time. Ooh, those, those that's, are, that's a classic example. You got to you gonna have everybody in in the chat talking about that, boy. That drives you absolutely nuts. And imagine what it does to the coaches. Mm -hmm. Drew, you have an intriguing perspective because you were actually one of those coaches before, as you transition on the media side. So you have the experience of being able to uniquely maybe relate and ask questions that may be slightly different than what other media people ask. So from your perspective, do you are you able to kind of draw in a reservoir from back when you were doing some coaching? And even though it's a different sport when you're covering football these days, how do you react uh, when you're looking at coach, uh, asking questions of coaching going early into a season? But number one, what type of routine do we have? Are we practicing at five, six o'clock in the morning and our bodies are getting used to doing things five, six o'clock in the morning, but all of our games on our schedule or at six or seven o'clock at night? You know, when do you when do we make that transition from practicing at five o'clock in the morning to practicing closer to the time that we're actually going to be playing? Because it's it's an adjustment when you're used to doing stuff in the morning, but now you're not playing at seven o'clock. Or uh, eight o'clock at night, especially for those central time, uh, those teams in the central time zone when you when you travel east. Well, uh, you know, well, let me let me rephrase that for those eastern teams when you travel to central yeah. time zone, yeah, because yeah. because you're losing another hour. So, how, how are we making those type of adjustments with with our practices and everything? That's number one. Number two, especially in this portal age. Let's be real. You got 15, 20, 25 people who are on the team this year who aren't freshmen who weren't there last year. And they are that coach without a recruiter for a reason. Now, somebody was supposed to be the incumbent at, at whatever position, but now you got this other person who's come in and basically came in and took somebody's position. Now, is there a bit of jealousy or is it that, you know, you know, he the man uh, that, that's coming in to take your position. So do I, find, do I find another position? Do I go take somebody else's position? Now somebody else is mad. Do I accept the role as a backup, but accepting the role as a backup? And I, am I really that competitor that coach really wants? Because I should be fighting for my, for my starting job mm. and you know those, those are the different things that you have to do when you talk about chemistry that's that deep part of that of, of that chemistry and everything because right now nobody's on campus but y'all for, for about the next week the only people who are on campus are the football players and possibly the volleyball players are st uh, starting to report but but that's it so now is that time that if y'all if y'all haven't gotten that bond, if y'all haven't got that team chemistry now, when y'all start going to class next week or in two weeks or whenever school start, uh, and, yeah, and you and you got homework, study hall, uh, five o'clock weights, uh, conditioning, individual drills, whatever, it's not gonna happen during that time. You got two weeks to to start to get that bond to get it going the right direction, or it's gonna it's gonna roll downhill. And it's going to roll down here to the direction that you may not be able to stop. I don't care how good of a coach you are. Let me get this quick one in, and this is basically a yes or no. Uh, we have the luxury where we had over the last couple of seasons, so this is really recent, uh, where you all had the ability to look at teams. Um, some of it see it directly. Some of it indirectly certainly had an ear to the street. 
can you recall the moment of this early part of the season, could you recognize that this was basically a championship level team, Charles? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Uh, Wilton. Be, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. I'm, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't want to stop you if you had a comment. In it. Go ahead. No, I, I, there there were things that I saw with uh, that Jackson State team uh, very early in the process where I just knew from a speed standpoint they were different. Okay, Wilton. I think for me, the maturity uh, that you see with certain players in, in certain in, in certain programs and to Charles point, you know, obviously being in Jackson, not even just with the, the Deion Sanders team, but I've seen quite a few Jackson State football teams prior to Deion Sanders. And it's not to say that they weren't uh, well put together. However, we, we, there's no secret that Jackson State wasn't where it should have been prior to Deion Sanders. And believe it or not, the, the body language that you could see from the players in practice, if you ever went to a Ooh. practice, especially somewhere in between like 2017, 2018, 2019, like it just was not the same, not the same at all. And so believe it or not, that matters when you start talking about are these teams championship caliber teams? When, you know how coaches say championship teams do all the right things at the right times when, when even when people aren't watching. And, and you have to do that. Drew? You just came off of, of seeing it. Did you see relatively early? He was like, yeah, there may be something here and there, but for the most part, yeah, this championship level team. Yeah, uh, with Florida A&M uh, going back to last year, especially coming off the two disappointing seasons when the only team that beat us was Jackson State essentially. And we knew we had to do what it is to do to chase down Jackson State and honestly (laughs) going back two years ago we thought we had what we needed to challenge Jackson State and then we had all the dysfunction on campus with all the certifications uh, that we needed to go on so uh, we got all that stuff behind us last year Clean. We had pretty much a clean summer. Yeah, we had that one little blip right going into uh, SWAC Media Day, but that's that was really a non-story. I felt as long as we stayed healthy, from what I saw, we were we were going to be the team mm. to beat, and which which is where we were. I will say this year, with a new level of dysfunction at Florida A and M, and yes, I'm putting my on my orange glasses with the green rims on them right now as, I, as I'm saying this. With the new level of dysfunction that's going on at Florida A&M University this year, if FAMU were to win the SWAC this year and or the Celebration Bowl, this may be a bigger accomplishment than last year because of all that dysfunction that's mm-hmm. going on in the highest of seven hills. <laughs> Good points by all of y'all. Thank you for sharing that. With that, we'll close it out. Thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Yadikaville, Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Let these guys come out there and they'll tell you whether they see a championship team or not. They've seen it. Uh, we'll see what that means as we get into it when we put them on the hot seat uh, before the season starts and tell us who the champion is or not. And we'll see what level of confidence they have as well. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday. So we'll be back right here on Thursday at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. We look forward uh, to Thursday as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Khalil, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. As Charles gets a little... Uh, smug. I know it's a little more challenging this year than in the past to kind of talk about a championship. We still gonna put this man on the spot. <laughs> Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you. As we do that, remember we're working. We're working. So y'all send a little nice little text or put in the message to tell Wilton to come down on his price point so we make sure that he has a spot and gets his own day. Uh, man, it's too expensive right now. Man, I, he's like a high price agent. Man, what's you think you're Dak or something? What's what's going on? No, nah, I de- <laughs> definitely don't want to be Dak. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, let's close it out. We'll talk with you soon, Charles. Of course, Wilton. You got it right next time. Last, Last time. time, nice. Say it again for the people can hear you. Lecture. 
Nice. <laughs> Travel light, everybody. Dismissed. <laughs>